What's going on guys, it's Adam from Spirited Systems and today I'm joined by Kyle from Persistent Systems. And we're gonna talk about this pesky little guy here, the radio with three antennas that you all have been asking about, the MPU-5. All right, so let's get started talking about the, the radio here. You know, one of the one of the questions we get asked a lot is, you know, why MPU five and what makes it different than you know these le like legacy systems that we're we're very familiar, especially uh, stuff that you know systems that we trust in the military, embitter one fifty two, uh, or in the law enforcement world, something like you know this Motorola XTS. These radios have been around a long time. Um, but there is a big difference between how this radio works and how these radio works. So can you kind of talk to us about that some? Yeah, so the MPU-5 is an IP-based radio. It operates off of the Wave Relay Man A, which is a mobile ad hoc network. And through that, the routing protocols are able to send high amounts of data to whoever needs it at that time. You know, run ATAC, pull HD video stream, you can operate robotics through it. Uh, there's plenty of different things you can do with this. And it's it's truly a computer. It's a networking solution for a lot of like military and law enforcement units where they can bring everything into one system and have access throughout these MPU-5s or these nodes for anybody who needs it throughout a whole team, throughout a command center okay. or anywhere else. Interesting. So, I mean, you know, traditionally with something like this, you know, and I, and I mean this respectfully, but it's, it's, it's essentially a very expensive walkie-talkie. I mean, at the end of the day, that's, that's what this radio does. I mean, as an RTO or a communicator, whatever you want to call it, I can essentially transmit on this mm -hmm. and it sends out a signal and then another version of this. Yep. Every single one is getting that same transmission yep. if they're within range and all of that. So it's point to point, mm -hmm. and, it, and you know, this talks to that, but I'm really limited to small amounts of data, if any yeah. data at all. But, but really, it's, it's been traditionally just voice mm -hmm. uh, on, this, on this guy. But what you're saying is that with this, I can transmit not only voice data, mm -hmm. uh, but I could also transmit any IP data. Right. So, so really, anything can be sent over this, this network mm -hmm. or that, the Man A or the um, mobile ad, ad hoc network which we'll talk about too, the differences between a mobile ad hoc and a, and a mesh network and things like that. But it's a computer that's transmitting data over the air. And that data can be anything that I want it to be. So it could be voice data, video data, just any other kind of data, exactly. as long as it's IP information. Yeah. So you think of it more as like a IP networking device rather than a radio. Exactly. It's really built uh, to be mobile. Like as we talked about, a sure. man A is differently. The mobile ad hoc network, these things are fluid. It's got no command node or command MPU5 that it needs to route everything through. Okay. So these things individually communicate with each other just one-to-one -one throughout the routing system and where it needs to go, which is super unique. And it adds to that like mobility of it. Right? Sure. Nothing in combat is ever static. Even yeah. guys just moving around buildings, um, going around corners, sure. inside rooms, anything like that. People are always moving. And the wave relay is able to route it respectively, route that data where it needs to go most efficiently um, from point A to point B. Yeah, and so, I mean, traditionally a guy moving around the battlefield, you know, as long as he's within range, he's talking to another guy and, and it seems pretty seamless because it, it kind of is. But traditionally with IP information, we start running into the issue that we're, we're trying to send data over the network and those pieces are moving. So really, the true, the true technology and the, and what makes the, you know, the MPU five and persistent unique is the wave relay algorithm. Yep. And that is, you know, that is the actual, you know, technology developed by persistent systems that is routing the man A that is routing that information exactly. as it moves. Yep. And something else you said that was really interesting to me is that there is no master node in this network, well, at least not that you can see. Right. So it's not like, hey, I program this MPU-5 to be the master node and to take control, which is, 
you know, traditionally in a mesh network, we would use some kind of fixed infrastructure and there would be some clear delineation between who's in charge and who's not. And that's how we manage the network information. But with this, it truly is, I can just turn this on and it joins the network. And then if I turn it off, the network doesn't care. No, the network doesn't care. You can add, and it, it's really seamless. You can add as needed, and it's it's, which makes it really scalable. Yeah, which for is sure. great for integrating all these different systems, whether it be a camera, whether it be uh, pan tilt zoom cameras, whether it be UGVs, UAVs, um, or even like just voice communication that you would use yeah. as you know as an ordinary soldier on the ground. So um, it, it's really awesome for all those things, and it's completely unique and completely separate than a lot of these legacy systems. Yeah, sure, because this, can do. you know, again, this doesn't care if you turn a radio off, but it also doesn't give us any of the enhancements like right. video or data or anything exactly. like that. So it, it truly is different. Uh, and, and I think, you know, these radios still have a place mm -hmm. in the, and I think we'll talk about kind of the ecosystem of, of MPU-5 and how it, how it really actually, in my opinion, is the first radio uh, system that works well with other, because, you know, something we were plagued with in the military was every company kind of has its own uh, waveform and its own, you know, piece of spectrum and its own way of doing things. Uh, but really, with this being an IP-based network, uh, we can do unique stuff, right? We can tether, yep. uh, you know, we could tether this radio into the MPU-5 network and it becomes an asset for everyone yep. who has an MPU-5. So that's an interesting thing. Uh, I can think of interesting situations. Obviously, if this radio has SATCOM capability, we can access that medium without having to carry it. Maybe it's on a vehicle or something. Uh, but we also have the ability to integrate something for like law enforcement. You know, if you're on a tactical team and your whole team has MPU fives, but all of your patrol guys have something like an XTS, we can also we can radio over IP yep. as you call it. We can tether this radio, and then we can communicate on their network and they can communicate onto our network. They can, we can listen to them and talk back and forth that way, which I think is a, that's a huge like end user uh, win, yeah. right? Because we, we're taking that interoperability piece and truly making it interoperable instead of, you know, the, the solution thus far has always been take this and well, I mean, the 163 is a great example of that. Mm -hmm. It's just take a 152 and slap a TSM waveform right. radio on the back and call it a day. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's working well. If, if you think it's working well, tell us your experience down in the comments. I have not yet met anyone who's really having a good time with the 163, but I have met a lot of people who are having a good time with the MPU-5 when it comes to, to the interoperability piece. Definitely. It seems to actually be working. It's, it's a huge part, um, and, and you called it, it's Roy, radio over IP. and. The, the great thing about it is all you need is one legacy radio, right? And to tether that to one sure. MPU-5. So with one soldier, law enforcement officer, having both of these on their kit with one tether, anyone who has the MPU-5 can access um, the channel on this Motorola or let's yeah. say Harris radio. Which is incredible because gone are the days that the commander has to come to the RTO and grab that second hand mic and use his 117, he can literally take his his push to talk and turn to the 117, mm -hmm. you know, golf channel, and then he can just listen, he can monitor or transmit yeah. out of that. Even though it's on, say on the RTO, the commander's way over there, he just over the air is talking through my 117. Yep. Using the MPU-5, he doesn't have to carry an additional radio, which is, which is awesome, and we can also put more than one oh, yeah. of these to make it more robust. Yeah, right? so that's that's, that's, a, that's another point that is good. You're actually enhancing the capabilities of these legacy radio systems. You bring on multiple, we call them gateways. If you sure. bring on multiple gateways onto your wave relay network, then your wave relay has multiple options to choose of where to route that data sure. to and from. It's gonna pick an and the, it, most efficient the most efficient route. route, exactly, to send that data. and. So having having a couple different Motorola's on there gives it just more options to be able to send that information through. Sure. And another good point is like, you can have a vehicle mounted solution yeah. that's um, tethered to an MPU-5. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That has so a higher gain, that. gain antenna, higher output. So you're not carrying around a 117. Sure. But you're using the capabilities that, you know, something Assets that is, there. exactly, something that's vehicle mounted and using the capabilities that that has that's over, you know, a man portable radio. 
Well, and, and to really stretch that concept, personally, I've seen, uh, you know, networks where we have an aircraft uh, 100 miles away and we're on, you know, you're on the ground, you have, you're talking to that aircraft and that aircraft is talking to another ground station that's equally as far away. So, you know, the two ground stations might be 200 miles apart. That aircraft is linking them, but I could also use the 117 that's 200 miles away. So if you have a fixed asset, you know, that has some kind of SATCOM capability or something better, or maybe it has fiber, right. or maybe it has something else, you could actually on the ground use that, you know, radio over IP resource yep. to do that. And I, I think it's interesting, we're talking about radio over IP, it's such a small part of the whole feature set that's on here. I mean, we could probably make a whole video right. on just radio over IP, but uh, let's talk about some of the other stuff. I mean, because there are some some things that I think are unique to the MPU-5, like one, I think it's incredible that, uh, you know, this piece right here, this is a, this is the actual body of the, this is the brain of the radio. We've taken all the antennas off and the battery, but we have uh, this, this, you know, hollow here that we can interchange our uh, radio frequency modules, right? So we have what Persistent offers S-band. S-band, L-band, uh, BAS-band. Okay. We got upper and lower C-bands yep. as well. What that means is that, you know, when you get this, you're just buying an RF card to change out as needed. Yeah. Um, and each of the bands have different, uh, you know, megahertz ranges for the, the signals that they put out. And you can switch it out depending on your mission set, uh, depending on what's going to be best used in that yeah. scenario. Well, in the spe I mean, spectrum allocation, if for right. any of the combo guys out there, you know that spectrum allocation is very tightly controlled and the ability to be flexible is, is a pretty, it's a pretty big deal. It's user swappable. So I can, as the end user, I can pop the card in four Phillips head screws. I just tighten them down and we're good to go. And the radio is back to IP68. Yep. So that, I can't remember the spec. I think it's 20. 20 meters. 20 meters for 30 minutes. Yep. Yeah. So it's, I mean, this is, and I've, so I've personally tested this uh, and I know that works. I know that I'm pretty amazed because with some of the other systems, uh, some of the embitter, the jam mm -hmm. embitter is known for being pretty good in the water. Yep. Uh, but some other systems are known for, you You have to dry bag them. Yep. Uh, this is actually diveable. It really is. Like you can wear this do your lockout or whatever and it's not gonna it's not gonna break the system yeah, 100 which is which is pretty i mean congratulations persistent engineering team because it, it's a hard feat and that that brings me to the next thing of like there's some interesting technology baked into the the radio the the rf card also the connectors on the sides so these are what 22 pen yep. uh connectors and they are uh you can just see well i mean on this guy here they allow you to mount the cable uh, very securely, but it's still just a hand tighten function. Uh, and these pins, they're only electrified when there's a cable detected. That's right. As soon as you take the cable off, it yep. the voltage detection just goes away. Exactly. Goes away. It'll detect what type of cable you hook up to yep. it as well. So um, we've got you know a general data cable uh, attachment right here, but you could hook up anything to that. You know, yeah, sure. any of our individual cables, whether you're hooking it up to a computer, do yeah. some. Uh, because all three offer USB yeah, compatible. So exactly. you could have one of these with three USB cables. Yep. You could have Ethernet. Yeah. Um, you could have a put, like there's the push to talks attack, the screen. Uh, I mean, really, the their data ports. So mm -hmm. if it's USB, it can be adapted, right. serial, all of that stuff. So for, again, for the Camo guys, it has the ability to uh, power things, you know, pull data in different forms. You know, it's USB, serial, Ethernet, all of that is baked into the radio already. So all your I.O. stuff is kind of handled. Uh, on the top, it has this little guy here. Uh, that's a, a video in because another interesting feature is it has video encoding right. built inside. It's native. The, yeah. yeah, it's native to the radio. So you don't need an external mm -hmm. encoder to serve video. To exactly. It. Yeah, it's a 3G SDI um, native encoder built within this. So. Yeah, so you can just plug in a camera, I mean, compatible camera, uh, and then, you know, this can actually be the encoding. Yeah, device. it's it's encoding that video as close to the source as possible. Sure. So it's maintaining a lot of that quality. Okay, perfect. Uh, and then so, something I get asked a lot, um, there's no screen. No. So how do we deal with a radio? We're used to 
you know, being able to, you know, look at the screen, right. know what channel we're on, program things. How do we, how do we deal with that? Well, um, so you don't need to interface with the, this at all once you turn it on. Uh, we have two different options for interfacing it. The main one is going to be through the dual push to talk. Okay. The dual push to talk has 16 different channel selectors on each of these two wheels. All right. And you can also control the volume from them on each one individually. And then right here, it has two dual push to talk buttons. Um, and you can see that this bottom one labeled B is, uh, has an indent in it. So sure. That way you can feel you can it feel at night. Them, right? yeah. Yep. Under nods or anything. Um, so most of your interface is going to be done through this. Um, additionally, you can do that through the RDC. Okay. Um, and the RDC is just a visual interface of that. So sure. Another interesting point is that the all the brains are on the MPU5 itself. So th this is a computer. It's it's running an operating system, the Wave Relay operating system, and this is a display. That's right. So there's nothing on it. There's no information being saved on it or anything like that. Nothing sensitive. So if you lose that. You know, if that falls off or something, no, you know, we don't have to hands across America because it's a <laughs> encrypted device or something. It's all in here, right? Which is with another interesting piece of this is that if you are, if you're familiar with operating systems, you can uh, actually create apps, applications, and stuff, and run them in the yeah. background on this. Yeah, you can definitely download different APKs and you know. For different systems, whether it be you have something to operate a UGB sure. on, um, or it could be you know like ATAC. ATAC's put into every single MPU five that sure. goes out of the door, um, and ATAC has plenty of its own plugins yeah, for that sure. people make. Um, so it's super useful, just like you, on your Android device, how you would be you know interfacing with it, clicking yeah. on an app, and being able to use it. So you super can, familiar. Exactly. It's not, it's, it's not like a Windows ninety five computer and. <laughs> It literally, it's touch screen. No, the, yeah. You know, we're talking about the screen itself. It's this guy right here. Uh, this is a rugged eye. What is it called? The RDC. RDC. is Display and Controller. Rugged eyes Display and Controller. You heard it here first. So this is, I mean, but it is very rugged. I mean, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a touch screen. It's, it's bigger. Uh, a lot of the things that I hear people say is like, hey, it's, it's big, but it also is, uh, is pretty bomb proof. It is just the display, which I like from a security standpoint and it can be used underwater. Yeah, definitely. All these buttons, even, you know, you could push the buttons underwater. Yeah. Uh, the only thing uh, I'll probably add to that is that it does have some different sensors in there, right? Sure. Accelerometers, oh, okay. gyrometers. Yeah. And what that is for is if you're sub-T or somewhere sure. where you lose GPS signal, um, that's still gonna be able to sense where you're at and be able to push PLI or position yeah, location sure. information over the network. Which is a, which is a, a huge problem in a sub-T environment mm. is we rely so heavily on tracking through GPS. Well, as soon as you go into that North Korean tunnel, all of a sudden you don't have GPS. Do you even have GPS in North Korea? But like you're, you know, you're going through, and you know, there's been a lot of crazy stuff like uh, putting stuff on a boot or on an arm so that you can track like movement. Uh, but now you're saying we can we can do some of those functions yep. through the exactly. through the screen, which is cool. So it's a really kind of a, a one stop solution if you're looking for that. You know, ATAC and the the radio piece, the comms, uh, everything on the same system. But you don't have to use this. No, 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 no. It, it'll work with any other. You know, like a lot of guys use Samsung devices as their EUD. It'll work with that as well. Sure. And There's just differences built in with this. Like you said, it's it's pretty much bomb proof and indestructible. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so I was just watching the Royal Marines uh, recruiting moto video, and they're all running around with. I mean, they got the screen. The radio, the push, you know, the the dual push to talk. Mm -hmm. They have the full setup. Yeah, exactly. So that's that's pretty exciting to see it out there in the wild, uh, being used with those guys uh, in in England. But there's, I mean, this is pretty much proliferated in the U.S. It's kind of amazing how how many how many of these radios are out there and being used today, uh, you know, in in service, both law enforcement and mill. Definitely, uh, and in the public safety sectors, and mm -hmm. the, media the media even has them. Yeah, which is one that is kind of overlooked because uh, questions we get is, "Oh, I wish you know we could buy it," and it's like, "Well, I mean, you might you might be able to buy it." It's, yeah. I mean, the there's there's news stations that are using it. Yeah, so, definitely. Uh, it's definitely not just just restricted. So other features on the radio that we we haven't really touched on, I guess. I mean, we talked briefly on it, but I want to hit on the push to talk because I think it's important. Uh, you know, you said it, but we're going to reiterate it. This, this right here, 
like this radio has programmed frequencies. That's right. Right? So when I am on channel one, I'm on a certain frequency, whatever frequency that is. When I turn to channel two, I'm now on a different frequency. So my, I'm chopping up the spectrum allocation, you know, so if you have a team frequency and then you have your company frequency and your platoon and your company and it keeps getting, and all of a sudden all the frequencies have been allocated and then they're saying, hey, you need to just not ever talk on your radio. With this, the man A is one frequency. Exactly. But I have 16 talk groups that I can choose from with two options on this PTT. So I can... You know, channel one on one side, and then ch you know, channel five on the other. Sixteen total, but I can have my like platoon, and you know, say in a company, one platoon could have its own set of sixteen channels, and then the next platoon could have its own set, and the next platoon could have its own set because it's all IP data. And I think that's something that's hard for older combo guys to wrap their head around is that you don't have to worry about the frequency anymore. So go ahead and give out the. Give everyone their own, you know, if they need, if a team down to the team level wants to have a fire team and a platoon, have its own talk group so they're not jamming up the whole yeah. network, they can't. Exactly. And it's just a twist of a, of a button and it gives you a little, it can give you a little indication too, it can talk to you. Mm -hmm. So if you put, if you spin this to one, it'll tell you you're on talk group one, um, dual comms, so you can have it coming in both ears, you can monitor, you can actually monitor more than just two. Yeah, through the RDC, right? You can click to monitor. Say you're a commander and you want to monitor three channels, yeah. which that would drive me insane. But <laughs> if you want to do that, you can monitor. I mean, you can monitor all 16 if you wanted to. That's right. It would be chaos, but you could do it. <laughs> so I think it's just cool because it opens up options and kind of the aperture of being a communicator changes yeah. when, because it is fundamentally different because we're going over an IP network instead of you know, using a frequency to talk on a walkie-talkie. Yeah, it's it's a completely different concept, and, and it's hard, you know, for a lot of guys to swallow and be able to comprehend that. But, I mean, talking about the dual push-to-talk, um, it's got Android audio features built into it. So, like you were saying, um, it's got two channels. So, if you have a stereo headset on, you can go ahead and monitor each different, uh, what we call talk groups, in each ear, yeah, right? sure. independently. Yep. So you know um, it's like exactly. Ace, A, your, my alpha is on this side, <laughs> yeah. and my bravo is on this side. Exactly, and um, and that's gonna free up. I know guys like JTAX used to be carrying two radios at sure. once, and yeah, they maybe even have two dongles sure. coming down yeah. from a headset. So well, now that, that frees that up, and now with one radio, with one thing that you're carrying, you can have multiple communications over sure. multiple talk groups yeah. seamlessly at the same time. Yeah, because like one guy, you know, if you're a JTAC or something like that, you really can leverage not only all the talk groups, but those talk groups can have other radios on those talk groups yep. that you're leveraging as well. You could also be looking, I mean, if we really talk big picture, you could have air assets that have wave relay, and then you could be looking at cameras on those assets all through the screen that's on your chest. Exactly. And so, sort of that future battlefield that we've been talking about since 2005, mm -hmm. it really is here now. Yep. Like the technology is here. It's just now we're we're getting it out. It's get proliferating now. So yeah. people are actually doing it. In it middle, it middle it's time. good to see like the, it's the concept of this whole networked battlefield where everything's integrated sure. and everything's accessible, yeah. right? Um, a lot of what like the MPU-5, the dual push to talk and the RDC, um, it's got a lot of features in there that we try to make it as user-friendly as possible sure. for the guys on the ground. But um, bigger picture, the network battlefield is, yeah. you know, commanders are able to sure. link into and plug into all these different devices and monitor the battlefield just as they see it in real time. Yeah. Well, I mean, and because I'm not a persistent systems employee, I can say whatever I want, which is awesome. So seeing this head-to-head -head with a lot of the other systems out there, um, I think it's really important to not discount the core technology, which is the algorithm. So a lot of the work that, you can look it up, this is all, uh, you know, this is published stuff. I mean, you can look online, and you can find the, the original work by the doctors at Persistent, and you can see all the work they did with mobile ad hoc networking when they were in college, and then on to starting uh, Persistent Systems. And that, the wave relay algorithm is the asset. The radio might change, 
you know, man portable unit five. Right. So we've had four, four others. others, right? So it's changed over time, but the the core competency of the man A has persisted. Ah, see, Q, it's <laughs> persisted, and that is the true technology, and that's what gives it an edge. Uh, and just some anecdotal uh, experiences of mine, seeing this compete in you know scientific testing underground, this it excels. It does very, very well in that contested environment. And something we haven't talked about yet is hopping, right? So like we talked about that traditional radio where I transmit, and if you just imagine a ring going out, yeah. it's really a sphere, but it's just going out in every direction. And if if this other radio is within range, then it interacts and it right. hears what it's being said. And then it talk, you can talk back maybe if, it's, if the conditions are right. Uh, but if uh, this radio is here and then there's another radio that's within range, but then there's another radio that can only talk to the center radio, then that far radio can't talk to him. Right. You have to remember in the military, if you've been in the military, you have to relay. Mm -hmm. So you'd be at the center station, you'd be passing traffic back and forth. With this, we have the ability to hop exactly. through radios that are around us. So we can extend our range by hopping. We can, you know, if you laid, if you imagine radios laid out at extreme range, we could, you know, transmit that data all the way through, uh, hopping through them. But, but more importantly to me is if you're on an objective and you are deep inside of a basement or you're deep inside of a subway tunnel or something uh, and you're all the way at the edge, you would hop back out all the way up and you can still touch that asset. Again, if you put your SATCOM on a roof and then you're all the way down in a New York City subway, as long as you can see another radio and that can see that SATCOM, we, the furthest guy from the edge can talk all the way up through that SATCOM, if that makes sense. Yeah. So we're hopping, mm -hmm. right? And uh, hopping does have some limitations, but the bandwidth of the radio is very high. Mm -hmm. So what is the, what are like the, you know, we're not gonna hold you to these numbers. I mean, cause it is, it, it depends on the environment, but are we 100 megabits per second, 120 megabits per second? Like talk two radios, right? Yeah. Just like if we put two radios and we did a throughput test, is it like in that 100 megabit yeah, range? Yeah, you're about at 100 megabit range. Okay, so that's a lot of data. Uh, if you know, it, if you know anything about it, and uh, don't don't quote me on this, but to get HD video through, sure. I think that's requiring 15 megabits. Yeah, sure. It just depends yeah. on the quality, right? Yeah. So we have, I mean, you could really parse that video down right. and it, and not need as much data. But every time we hop, we lose mm -hmm. data. But you know, a problem. Say, say the math is it's 100 megabits, and you lose half every time you just you know round numbers. So, you know, we're, we hop once, we're down to 50, we hop again, we're down to 25, and so on. But if you start with a lot of bandwidth, then you, you can have more hops. If you start with 8 megabits, then you lose that data much quicker. So I think, you know, I still think, I don't know if it's the highest MAN-A data radio on the market, but I, th I think that it is still. Yeah, um, one of the, the golden pieces about Wave Relay is that um, if nobody is subscribed, to a, sure. a video or, or whatever that IP address sure. is, then it's not sending that over the network. Yeah. So it's able Very to save, if you think about like your throughput and sending that through a pipe, yeah. you know, you've only got a limited amount of space sure. to yeah, work with. Yeah, you can with. only put so much um, So Wave Relay is able to like intelligently route information where it needs sure. to go, when it needs to go there, so that way it can save and have conserve the highest throughput for sure. like the most important tasks. Yeah, what it needs. Yeah, exactly. and it does, another thing that it does organically is it prioritizes information that is being sent over the network. Yeah. So like voice, highest priority. Mm -hmm. Because if you have guys in a, you know, when they're in a fight, the, the you know, we're gonna fall back to our right. best method of communication, which is voice. I don't care what your body cam has on it. I want to hear you, so we're gonna. So it'll do that. It's doing yeah. that for you in the background. The man A versus mesh network issue. I know there's going to be comments of there's going to be a guy who's going like, actually with a. But the the man A, in order for it to be a man A, it has to be, by definition, it has to be mobile. It can't have fixed assets, which this doesn't need. So that's one point to remember, and it also has to be self healing, right? Because you know, one, you can't have one without the other. If it has mobile assets, that means at some point something could leave the network. And I know from experience with this radio, it will not trash the network. If a, if a node decides that its battery's dead or it leaves the network because a plane flew off, the network, without you ever understanding what happened, will just 
It just goes away. It's going to heal itself. And then it yep. just come if it comes back, the radios. It's very incredible, actually. It's 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 lost on us in the age of cell phones, which you know we can talk a little too about how this is different than that. But it's very incredible to you know the technology to have something that will make that arbitrate. You know that that uh, it'll arbitrate those decisions right. without having a master node. Right. Right. It, they're they're all kind of just like working together, which is really that is the core competency. Again, it's really the man a because mm-hmm. all of the other stuff we're talking about is hardware. Right. So MPU six. When you know one day that thing is going to be a thing, it's, it's it might look different. It might be smaller. It might be you know a diff- it might be uh, it might be coyote brown, or maybe not black. But maybe it will be black. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it'll be uh, you know more antennas, less antennas. But that's all hardware decisions. Right. Really, the the magic is in the the wave relay is the algorithm. Exactly. That that is the algorithm. Yeah. Um, that's where it all started from. Yeah, for sure. And it's it's an incredible system. I mean. Uh, the, the last thing, everybody's probably been like, Adam, it has three antennas, and that hurts my brain. So why? <laughs> why? And it actually has four with the GPS antenna, but it, uh, it has three antennas because of a technology that is uh, pretty prolific, and you use it every day, you just don't know, in your cell phone, uh, but it's, it's MIMO, mm-hmm. which is multiple input, multiple output. Exactly. Right? Whereas versus a... You know, legacy radio that was a SISO radio, so single input, single output. And that helps us, you know, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but that helps us because we have more chances of receiving that information from one radio to another. And we can send more because we have three points of entry, three points of exit. So Exactly. Um it's it's sending from each of these. Sure. You know. Yep. Um so if there's anything cut off at the receiving MPU5, um, let's say like one of the antennas isn't getting 100% connection, sure. uh, the other one's getting 80, the other one's, they're all adding together at the receiving radio. Yeah, right? for and, sure. And that MPU5 is pulling that information back together in yeah. order to form a full packet. Sure, which is, you know, if you're not familiar with, with networking, you know, with the difference between this, again, is that I'm sending out this wave into, you know, the sphere of, of waveform, and then it is, getting extrapolated on the other side in an anal- kind of an analog fashion. Some of it's digital, but not going too deep in the weeds. It's basically making a speaker vibrate on this side. That's what it's doing. Whereas with a data network, even if it's just an Ethernet cable between two things, you are sending packets of information. Right. And generally, you'll send like a small packet, and then if it gets received well, you'll push the, the network will try to push the limit. It'll keep making the packet size bigger because it wants to send more information. MIMO helps us with that because we, we can, we're receiving more. I mean, there's three intent, we're receiving more, but it's also helping us with our polarization effort, which is, I don't know if we really want to get too far in the weeds on it because it, it really starts to hurt your brain, but this is a horizontal, horizontally polarized antenna in the center. That's correct. And these are vertically polarized. Yes. Because we actually, when, when that RF energy goes out into the environment, it's changing polarization. But through testing, we know that the radios do better when they have different polarizations. Yep. They're, the throughput actually goes up, which is very interesting. Yeah, if you think about it, like the receiving antenna, as these uh, signals are bouncing off of stuff, sure. objects, walls, um, the receiving antennas are receiving those at different angles. Yeah, sure. Right. Um, so it's picking up information from almost 360, having a horizontal polarized sure. and then two verticals. Well, and we're gaining outside. that, you know, common nerds again. If there's a horizontally polarized signal hitting a vertically polarized antenna, we get dB loss, like 30 dBs of loss right off, right off the bat. Mm-hmm. So, like, if this antenna transmitted and it went horizontal because it bounced off something. We don't get the loss because we have a horizontal right. antenna, which is which is interesting. Um, and there's there's much more. I mean, we can't deep dive, I guess, into every uh, every little thing. If you want more information, if you are, especially if you're in the military or if you are uh, law enforcement and you would like this is something you're interested in, obviously you can contact Persistent Systems. But they do offer a great training program in New York City. Uh, the MAT course, is yep. it called the MAT course? man a Administrator's course. Yep. Yep. So that that course is excellent. Steve up yeah. there, he's still teaching. Um, yeah, Steve's so there. Steve's up there teaching. He's he's a great instructor and he can you can go there and he will he will go into the weeds if you want oh, yeah. to. 
uh, and that all the, all the support is there as well. So if they have exactly. to pull someone in, they can they can answer those really deep networking questions for you. But yeah, I mean. Kyle, I want to thank you for coming out and kind of giving us this. Like, we just glossed over it today. We plan on, even though it feels like we went much deeper, uh, we kind of glossed over. We plan on making more videos, and we're gonna we're gonna kind of like call out specific things and maybe talk about them uh, more and more in context and, and give you more information about each piece. Uh, if there's anything specifically that you want to hear about just comment below and tell us so we you know we can start formulating that plan and we'll try to answer your questions as as best we can but i think that's it for this video we're going to keep it keep this one a little shorter and uh, we'll see you guys next time <laughs>